I've ironed in the interfacing on the neck as well as the front right and the front left of the boa. I've got the boas laid out facing each other. Now remember this is the neck portion and this is the the neck front coming down here and this is the center front. So I'm going to make sure that both of the boas are heading in the same direction. See it almost looks kind of like a vest. Now before we attach the boa neck to the boa front we're going to sew our half inch on our neck seam in the back. I'm going to do that for the piece with the interfacing as well as the piece without the interfacing. I've stitched the boa back, um, the neck portion together on the interface piece as well as the, the um, original or the front side. So now what we want to do is place your boa so that it looks like it does if you're going to um, wear it. Now when you do it like this, it kind of looks kind of funny because this is going that way and this is going that way. That's the beauty of fitting on a mannequin because when you turn this over, that fits there and this one fits here. So I'm going to pin those in place. And once they're pinned in place, when you fold it out, see how you get the round portion of the neck? Now you'll sew these together with the half inch because that's the seam allowance we left. So I'm going to sew a half an inch across this on both pieces of the, the under layer or the liner layer. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the pieces that are the right side. Now that the kitchen boa liner has been stitched together, I went and pressed the shoulder seams as well as the neck seam. I did the same thing for the front or the outside section and I pressed it at the shoulders and the neck as well. So I have the right side of the boa laid out and I put a pin mark right about the center of the waist maybe a little bit above the waist but you can determine where you want it because I made these ties that came out of the fabric here you can check out my video on how to use the turning tubes because that's what I did to make this this tie and I'm going to take one tie and put it on one side and I'm going to pin it in place and then making sure that the bottoms are lined up evenly and once they're lined up evenly I'll take the other tie and position it right in the same place. Now that those are pinned in place, I'm now going to take the towel. So you want to make sure that the print of your towel is facing the right way. You have this thick section at the top of the towel. That's going to hinder me getting that sewn into here without all the bulk. So I'm just going to simply cut off that extra piece up here. So once you cut that off, we're going to turn it over because remember this is the right side and we're going to lay it on top of the boa because you want right sides together. What I like to do is find the center of the towel which is right here. Put a pin there and I also like to find the center of the boa and then I'm going to put a pin there or if you like you can just clip it and that'll tell you where that center is. So there's my center there and here is the center of my towel which I'm going to put right there. So I'm going to line these up together and I'm going to put a pin right there in the center. Next I'm going to take the tail end or the side edge of the the boa and I'm going to bring it in because I'm sewing a half an inch seam allowance. I'm going to come in a half an inch and I'm going to lay the boa a half an inch in and I'm going to pin it. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Measure in a half an inch. Place the boa right next to it and pin it in place. So I like my pleats going in the center so my pleat is going to actually come this way. So I'm going to pleat up a little bit and I'm going to pleat it and bring the pleat toward me. 
So by me bringing the, bringing the pleat toward me, it's going to put the pleat toward the center on the inside. So you do the same thing. You're going to pull up a little bit, tuck it, and bring the pleat toward you. Pin that one in place. And do the same thing for the other one. Bring the pleat toward you. And then pin it. You see all the pleats are headed in your direction. So when you flip it over, all the pleats now are going toward the center. Now I have both of the ties attached on each side of the boa. I also have each of the towels pinned in place with their pleats on the bottom. So you're just going to simply sew across and I'm going to sew my half inch seam allowance across here. And I'm also going to sew a half inch seam allowance to lock these ties in place. Now that the two ties are sewn in and they're put in place here, and now I've attached the towels at the bottom. So I'm going to take the towels and flip them over onto the boa, like so. And I'm going to flip the other one over. Now we're going to take the liner piece. We're going to lay it down on the right sides. And we're going to pin right sides together starting with the piece where the towels are. This is one time that I do like to use my pins because you want to make sure everything is lining up okay. And then I'm going to rotate around, tucking everything inside, like tucking in the ties, tucking in the towel, and you're going to grab only the liner and the, and the outer section, and you're going to pin these all the way around until you're completely done. But as I pin, when I get to the next section, that's the section I'm going to leave open because you got to turn this. So when I get to the next, sec next section, I'm going to pin this here. And I'm going to put a pin right here. But I'm going to leave the rest of that open. I'm just going to put a pin just to hold it in place so I know where it is, but later I'm going to remove that pin. The boa has been pinned in place. As you can see, it's pinned in the bottom. All the towel is stuffed inside of the two pieces. It's like sandwiched in between. And I left an opening right here on the next section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sewing from this side right here. I'm going to sew from here down and I'm going to make a U shape and come up and over, down and back up. Now that both pieces have been sewn together on top of the towel, we're going to take the corners and I'm going to cut across at an angle and cut some of the excess off where the towel is. Now that the ends have been trimmed, so I'm going to come up here to the neck portion because anything that's on a circular, you have to clip it. So I have a pair of clipping scissors. So I'm going to take my scissors. I'm just going to clip. And when I clip, I'm clipping down to the stitching. Now that will allow that neck, when you press it, it'll kind of spread out a little bit and that'll give us a little bit more space to make it round. And we're going to do the same thing for the inside. Even though you didn't stitch it, you still want to clip it. And since there is no stitching here, I'm going to guesstimate on the clipping. So now what we're going to do is turn it. So I'm going to use the intersection where I clipped. And it's going to be a little challenging, but if you'll reach in there and grab the towel right there and it's going to be kind of challenging but but pull the towel out in the meantime you're turning it at the same time and the towels coming out of the hole okay there's one towel okay so that has been pulled now that everything's turned, I'm going to go and I'm going to press 
the neckline and I'm also going to press the seam. I'm going to press everything that we sewed. We'll press that before we close up the opening in the neck. I've pressed my boa on the right side and wrong side. And you see this is the opening that's left here. And remember we did those clips. Those clips are going to allow you to close this up nice and neat. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the clips on one side and tuck them in. And tuck the clips in on the other side. And we're going to place it right on top of each other like that. And then we're going to pin it. You're going to do this all the way across till you get to the other side where all of the the little clips are tucked inside. Now that I have it pinned in place, I'm just going to do a simple top stitch because rem remember this is going to be the portion that goes around the neck and it's going to actually touch, touch your neck so you're not going to actually see these um, stitches so I'm just going to top stitch this all the way around. I finished the kitchen boa and I closed up the opening and what I did is I did a top stitch from one shoulder all the way over to the other shoulder so it doesn't look like I just sewed up the hole. It kind of looks uniform. So let's put it on the mannequin. Boa has been finished and you can see I have it lined up with the shoulder seams on the mannequin. And I wanted to turn it around and let you see the back where you've got that small amount of fabric back there and not all that big bulk of fabric. And that way um, it's almost kind of like a halter top. So that just makes it a lot more comfortable in the back. And now by adding the ties in the front, because when you wear the boa without the ties, the boa has a tendency to slide off the shoulder, and we don't want that. We want it to stay on. So by adding the ties, it gives us an opportunity to tie the boa in place, just like so. And that way it stays together, and you don't have to worry about it shifting or sliding off your shoulder because it stays in place. It also doubles as an apron top, apron front, you know. It doesn't go all the way around, but it will it will catch a lot of the spills and a lot of the splashes um, that you might get on your clothing because you've got the boa on. Of course, you can still put an apron on up under the boa. So I hope that this tutorial on how to make the kitchen boa slash kitchen boa vest slash kitchen boa apron has been helpful, and I hope you try it. Happy sewing!